Good morning, Ola. Ola? Ola. Oh, she's on vacation. Good for her. Well, this is John Bacuzzi, and I'll be here uh, with a special guest today, uh, Merrick Klebisky, uh, head of global um, group IT and global transformation from RBI Bank. And it is going to be a fantastic uh, conversation today. Super excited. A lot about the cloud, a lot about what RBI is doing and what Merrick is doing at the bank. Uh, to really transform the bank utilizing and taking advantage of cloud technology. So with that, let's welcome Eric. Hi, John. Eric, how are uh, you? Welcome. Uh, thanks for the invitation. Good to be here. I'm all fine. And I also, uh, I'm, let's say, envy Ola for being on the holidays. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, we'll join her after we get done with this podcast. We'll find out where she is and then we'll head there, okay? Agreed, agreed, agreed. Sounds All right, like good. So, so tell me a little bit about RBI Bank to start off, maybe, and then a little bit about yourself. But, you know, RBI Bank for the listeners, you know, how big it is. I know it's based in Vienna, but, but tell me about your reach and your size. Sure. So I, RBI is uh, Raiffeisen Bank International. It's an international banking group with a head office uh, in a lovely city of uh, Vienna. Uh, and uh, the group consists of um, uh, head office plus uh, 12 uh, network banks located in the central Europe. All the network banks which are part of the RBI group are the fully universal uh, banks uh, serving the customers in uh, retail and corporate and uh, markets across all the channels. So I would say uh, we have uh, quite a significant coverage and RBI is the same time uh, one of the biggest uh, banking groups in Europe, definitely the biggest in uh, our CEE region. Wow, fantastic. I mean, that's a, so if we didn't know about it before, it's certainly worth knowing about because RBI is a big bank in Europe. That's in, that's incredible. Definitely. Um, when you think about your journey there and some of the work you're doing as a, as a head of group IT strategy and transformation, you know, a big topic over the last three years has been cloud. And two years ago, it was like everything was lift and shift, my favorite word, move everything to the cloud. But we've gotten much more practical about cloud over the last year. So tell me, how does cloud enhance really the scalability and agility of a business? You know, and in your case, RBI. Sure. So uh, first, uh, let me start very shortly about uh, introducing myself and, and uh, uh, my responsibility. So I'm leading the group IT strategy and transformation. So I have a, uh, I would say nice combination of uh, participating in definition of the strategy. So defining the direction, but then with the responsibility for the transformation, also uh, helping the group to go into this direction and put that kind of strategy into practice. And uh, you're right. Uh, my cloud was over the last couple of years, the biggest, I would say, trend direction and maybe discussion point. Uh, and since then we learned a lot. Uh, and I think the one who learned a lot who had some practice uh, in the meantime. So looking looking from this perspective, I can say that uh, for us, uh, looking from the RBA perspective, cloud have definitely strategic uh, meaning. We have decided to go to the cloud as our new technology, I would say platform for the group. And um, I think looking from this perspective, uh, our journey is already two years and, and uh, we gain, I would say a lot. Uh, I think the question about what is the impact of the cloud or for the business and business agility is actually spot on. And I'm super happy we start with it because um, I would say this answers to another question, which is often asked to us, why? Why we do cloud? Why we decided to put cloud as a kind of foundation for uh, what we do? And I would say there are the reasons both for the uh, business and for the IT. Looking from the business is definitely enables a lot of innovation and in terms of business and IT, it brings agility. So actually possibility to, to act in a much more dynamic and much more, uh, I would say, um, agile way in terms of responding to the, to the client needs. And uh, in terms of what we gain from and what we are gaining from the cloud solutions, which we uh, built or which we um, uh, operate on the cloud is definitely, we get the speed. Uh, we are currently able to respond to the needs of the clients much faster. And as one of the examples, I can say we have developed, we have built our Raiffeisen Digital Bank, 
fully on the cloud. Every solution which we built on the group, which is consumed by our network banks, is built on the cloud, deployed on the cloud and consumed by the network banks in the periods of time which are drastically faster than ever, uh, than ever before. Looking from this perspective, we also have much higher flexibility and scalability. So when the when the um, solution is successful, we can scale it easily. Not, I would say, thinking about uh, limitation related to the infrastructure. So, so clearly, a lot of benefits, and I think those are things that people do talk about, and maybe even some dream about, um, and haven't implemented as maybe successfully as as you and the, and the team at RBI. Over the last two years, what do you think have been some of the lessons learned and thinking about uh, how to be successful in a cloud transformation? I mean, what advice could you give to people? Are there any real components that you learned over the last two years? I like one metaphor. Uh, I like climbing. I generally love mountain, going to the mountain. Uh, and uh, uh, I would say that successful cloud transformation is not that in the natural, of course different from the um, uh, successful uh, uh, climbing trip. So first, maybe foremost, you need to have your purpose. You need to have a reason. And looking from our perspective, we had a clear reason on the IT side to modernize our technology uh, of our banks, but at the same time, on the especially uh, on the business side, because our aim, our vision is to be the most recommended banking group in CE. And in order to be there in this position, we need to be very swift, we need to be fast, we need to respond to the client needs very quickly. So looking from this perspective, this was this was clear. Second, you need to have a target and you need to have the clear direction. And uh, when we were considering how to achieve the modernization and how to modernize ourselves fast and how to use the cloud fast, we have defined our strategic targets and ambition. So first was to achieve 50% of our technology in the cloud in two years, 80% uh, uh, in the period of uh, four years. And after two years, I can say we are almost there. And this uh, target is uh, very uh, realistic to, to be achieved uh, this year. So it was very important that we had a very high, I would say, goals, very ambition goals, but they were realistic to be uh, achieved. Third, you need to have your kind of tools, equipment. This is, uh, I would say, inevitable. And uh, I think on one hand, you as an organization, any organization may leverage the experience, the knowledge, the competences of uh, external partners to bring this proven tooling, the pro uh, build proven capabilities. But we felt this is our duty to build uh, our method, to build our way to uh, go to the cloud. This is uh, in uh, RBI called uh, Cloud Migration Acceleration Program in a short CMAP. And the CMAP became a kind of frame for the cloud migration uh, uh, for us. And last but not least, because maybe I should even start with this because I think this is the most important and critical factor for the successful uh, cloud transformation are people. Uh, and uh, actually from our perspective, our cloud journey is a huge and very consistent investment in building capabilities, training people, upskilling and giving them I would say practical, productive ability to work with the cloud uh, technologies. And I think this is the way to actually bring the, 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 the cloud and get the buy-in and get the engagement of the, of the people. And I think with the people it starts and with the, with the, with the people, the success of the cloud uh, transformation ends. So, so let me just recap just for our listeners is at the first thing, first and foremost, to your point, let's bring it to the top is people then vision, then target, then tools, and then people, right? So people on top exactly. and bottom. Exactly. Um, exactly. We'll make it like a people sandwich. Um, exactly. so, so that's critical. And when you think about tools and you mentioned partners, I know you're working with firms like Hitachi Vantara. Do you bring in partners early in this, in the vision component, or do you bring them in after you've created the vision? What are your thoughts on that? To be honest, uh, I think having a solid partner next to uh, yourself is uh, important at any step of this of this journey. Yeah. So looking from this perspective, while defining the vision, while defining the strategy, it's, all, it's always good to have certain challenge, to have guidance, to have maybe access to the practices of others. Because I have to say, we also haven't been 
defining our uh, targets on our own. We got the inspiration from the companies, international global companies who were already a few steps ahead. And we had the access also thanks to our uh, partners this helped us to, I would say, make our mind and define the strategy targets looking from this perspective. Then in terms of building the blueprint, of course, we wanted to build the blueprint which will fit RBI because I, arguably no one knows our organization like we know it. Uh, and looking from this perspective, we knew where our capabilities are. We also decided to build our own cloud factories. So the, so the central teams which, were, which are supporting our network banks in the cloud uh, uh, migrations but at the same time we wanted again certain advice on which tools can we use how they can be applied what are the requirements uh, how we can maybe speed up in certain in certain things and again this was the iterative process but it was important to have someone who is a kind of a sparring partner and, and also guides uh, in it and definitely uh, in the delivery or implementation of the of the transformation I think from the beginning, the role of the of the external partner uh, partners like uh, Hitachi was, uh, I would say, essential. Sometimes there is a kind of like a chicken or egg, I would say, dilemma. Uh, someone can say we cannot move to cloud because we don't have enough uh, people, we don't have enough uh, skilled yeah. resources, and we cannot have the enough skilled resources because we don't have the practical experience in cloud. And it's a little bit of the kind of vicious cycle. So looking from this perspective, the partnering with someone who has experienced people who can augment you, who can support you, help to break it and actually move uh, move forward. And this is actually how it was in our case. Yeah, and I love, uh, Merrick, the, the point you brought up there that I love the most, I wrote it down, was the sparring partner. I think it's critical to think about uh, partners as someone that's there, not to just follow directions, but to really push on and challenge the team so you can come up with the best solution. So I do love that word, the sparring partner. That's great. Yeah. Um, now, now, when I think about your journey over the last two years, I know there's been no bumps in the road. It's completely been perfect and smooth. But let's say hypothetically it wasn't. What key challenges are there in a successful cloud transformation that you've learned along the way? You know, Is there anything you could give some tips that are some challenges to look out for? So first, let me for a second still come back to this previous point. I think still there is a lot of association that having a partner uh, with you on such a project is an outsourcing activity. Yeah. And nowadays, I'm deeply convinced it, it's not and it shouldn't be. And I think the sense of partnership, if the sense of partnership is on both sides, and this is really a partnership, so we really jointly tackle the problems and go into the one direction like we like we uh, do in our transform uh, cloud transformation program i think this is a completely different uh, model and i think this is the model for the future for a lot of companies to look not for the outsourcer not for the vendor but look look for the partner and i think this is not semantics i would say in terms of not semantical uh, difference but i think this is only emerging and it's still some time until such a model will be will be really popular but i think that's the way to go just just no saying. thank you for thank you for bringing it back to that because it is it's such an important differentiation in the marketplaces you know it's it's we're we're years away past the point of your mess for less um and and what we really partnership means that you're going to have challenges together you're going to work on them together there's bumps in the road but you're going to get through them together not blaming but strategizing exactly. and getting to that that envision, and that's the difference, right? Before it was just outsource. Exactly. I'm I'm saving cost uh, cost optimization, and and you know if you do it and you don't do it right, we'll reprimand you. And but now it's the real teamwork, right? Especially that the cloud, no one can do it for you. I mean that uh, there can be a partner who will do it with you, but I think no one can do it for you because in the end. This is your new technology. This is your new technology platform. You build it, you run it, yeah. and uh, it's impossible to actually, or otherwise, it, it, it would be maybe possible, but I think it would be uh, irresponsible to, to do this in the format of outsourcing. So you need to have your own people, your own capabilities, your own experience, and someone who actually knows where to help you and where to phase out. And I think this is, this is inevitable that it works in this uh, 
uh, in this way. And you asked about the challenges, right? So yeah. as you said, only hypothetically, <laughs> uh, definitely there is, there is a lot. First, I, I mentioned one of the success factors related to the targets. One of the challenges is we live in definitely super dynamic environment and there is a lot of uh, uh, priorities. There is a lot of uh, business needs. There are a lot of developments which are going on. And uh, let's be honest, cloud uh, uh, transformation, cloud migration is a modernization exercise. Yeah. So it creates certain capabilities which serves the business in the uh, second step, but it's like, a, you know, short term pain, long term gain. And in the short term, when it's painful and it requires attention, resources, priority, it competes versus a lot of other priorities looking from this perspective. And I think the right prioritization uh, is one of the challenges. What it is related or what, what is connected to, it has to be the agenda of the entire management board. I'm working in the corporate environment. So looking from this perspective, this is not the IT project. It's not a kind of backend uh, transformation. It has to be high on the agenda of the entire board with the clear understanding from the CEO through the uh, uh, all um, uh, board members that for every single discipline, this um, uh, transformation is uh, inevitable. And to, it, having said that, uh, take a look. We have built the Raiffeisen Digital Bank, as I said. We do a lot of innovation in cloud. We are building engineering. We are modernizing our backend and we are modern, modernizing core services. We are doing data mesh. Uh, and all of those you could do on-prem, but why? It's, it's, it's much more convenient. It's much more efficient to do it in a cloud environment. But for this, you need to be ready. And I think having such a mature business partners as we have in RBI, having such a mature leadership as we have in RBI, understanding the value and understanding that we need to invest short term in order to build the capabilities in the long term, I think was is a challenge and it was it was a huge success success uh, factor on on our way. And uh, maybe last but not least, not to uh, say too many of this of this uh, uh, challenges. There is certain misconception in terms of how to prove that the cloud works. Uh, a lot of companies start with the singular workloads, singular POCs, immediately looking for the cost reduction and what was the uh, business case. And uh, sometimes it's surprising that the first implementations are not really successful, that the POCs are taking quite, quite a long time, that the costs are um, uh, increasing, not uh, decreasing, there might be some disappointment. And this was also a challenge in our case. And we had, again, very strong support from our management to think big and prove big and really to look on the entire ecosystem. And I think this is like, you know, like you would be replacing the car fleet in your, in your corporate from the uh, gasoline cars to the electric cars. And first you would invest into all the infrastructure, but you would only replace one or two cars. And then you would say, but this infrastructure was so costly, everything was so costly, it's not really being consumed, right? But if you replace 100 or 200 of your co uh, company cars, then you can rethink or you can reconsider that. Then the business case is very clear. So this was, let's say, similar challenge. And I think, again, breaking such a vicious cycle uh, helps a lot uh, in terms of that's to a, overcome that's the a challenges. Big ask. That's a big ask of a board, though. To kind of think about it in that big way, um, was that a was that a big sale internally to get your your board and your CEO on, on, on you know on the same page uh, with the vision that you you talked about and the target? I think this was a lot of good discussion discussion about the business and discussion about the benefits, not technical benefits but business benefits yeah. from cloud. There was of course a lot of also I would say education. I mean really understanding how cloud works and what benefits uh, you know what benefit it brings but this was also uh, i would say proving with the with the early successes and, and and with the early early steps i would say in our case and this is a little bit to this uh, very first uh, point which we discussed there was one additional i would say item which i think nowadays become especially in our part of the world more and more important looking from the decision making on uh, going to the cloud because we started with the business impact and this agility for the business. But please let's not uh, forget about uh, resiliency and yeah. about security, uh, which the, uh, the cloud is uh, bringing. And in a kind, I would say, 
stormy times, especially in the Central uh, Europe, uh, in, uh, very, uh, I would say, turbulent times uh, in terms yeah. of our political and uh, geopolitical environment. I think the resiliency and, and security which the cloud is bringing was very strong argument to, I would say, put the pedal to the metal in terms of accelerating the transformation. So looking from this perspective, yeah. this was a good discussion. There was certain arguments which we had. There was certain arguments which were given, I would say, by the circumstances. But all those was really convincing or convincing enough for the board to uh, give us a green light to go. Yeah, and Merrick, I think, again, you know, just thinking about it, it's not a technical decision. It's a business decision, right? You're looking at the Indeed. business purposes. P people, in, in, at the end of the day, your bank customers don't care if it's mice on wheels or it's in the cloud or in a server in some basement. As long as they can utilize their app or make transactions smoothly, they're fine. And yeah. so- yeah. So we have to, that's why it's a business decision. And so my guess is that some of this transformation and moving to the cloud was about customer experience, employee experience, security, agility, you know, all these things that are going to help you. Right. Because listen, uh, as we, as we said, there is also this unspoken expectation towards the bank. Bank has to be rock solid, right? Bank has to be the, uh, resilient. Bank has to be re uh, secured. It's like a synonym, I would say. So looking from this perspective, this is something which is our duty and which we need to, yeah. what we need to uh, assure. But as you said, on one hand, the client does, may not care or does not care if the server stands in the basement or is uh, somewhere, uh, let's say, on the, uh, on the cloud provider side. But the same client uh, expects from us very well adjusted offering to his needs and for this we need the big data analytics and it's much better working in the cloud environment or he needs or she needs something uh, as a new value proposition which will come very quickly because something changed on the market and we can immediately uh, bring some uh, offering like we did when the corona have uh, uh, coronavirus have started we have enabled very quickly the video uh, cooperation between our clients and our advisors based on the tool uh, iConnect which was hosted on the cloud and consumed on the cloud. And again, these are the, I, I would say, real moments where customers does not even know that they, they want us to be on the cloud and they want us to operate in the speed which only the cloud environment is allowing. Yeah, I love it. That's great. And I think that, that's critical. These are all key components to think about. The, the other thing I want to ask you about here related to this is, does everything belong in the cloud and does it all belong in one cloud? And it's a semi-trick question, but I want your perspective on this is, you know, should we just move everything to AWS or everything to Azure, or everything to Google? You know, what's what was your approach in thinking about this? And did Itachi Vantara, your partner, kind of help you in deciding the right cloud? So looking from this perspective, we as a, an RBI, as a group, we have the multi-cloud uh, uh, strategy. So we cooperate with two hyperscalers and we are working with both of them um, looking from our cloud transformation. Uh, what we try to achieve is that we try to have the best fit of the workloads, which we have uh, into the cloud environment uh, where they are going and uh, definitely uh, how to define the cloud strategy, how to select the partners, how to define the strategy with our partners was our own uh, responsibility. This we have done uh, before the uh, trans cloud transformation program have started. But of course, currently we cooperate and uh, here we also uh, cooperate with Hitachi Vantara, defining which workloads fit to which cloud uh, environment best, where they will be the most performant, where the, uh, they will operate under the, uh, under the best uh, cost. You also asked if everything will end up yeah. uh, in the cloud. You know, this would be, potentially a dream. So this would be a kind of target state, definitely. And, and this is something or the direction we are heading to. But at the same time, we are aware of our uh, technology stack. We are aware of our uh, technology uh, blueprint, and we are aware that we have certain workloads, uh, especially the old, I would say, legacy part of our uh, landscape, which does not fit into the cloud and does not fit into the cloud right now. And looking from this perspective, uh, we also consider certain 
uh, workloads to stay and remain on on prem. But this also motivates us to optimize over the time our on premise uh, infrastructure footprint. So these two environments, at least for the for the kind of foreseeable amount of time, uh, will uh, coexist. This is also the regulatory. Uh, um, uh, requirement in certain geographies in certain countries uh, in which we operate. But as said, certain workloads will need to undergo different way of transformation, maybe replacement like we uh, uh, consider currently for the core banking uh, system roadmap. This will take um, us a couple of years. And I think only then we can say we are ready to read it fully in the uh, in the cloud. Merrick, I couldn't agree more. And it's it's exactly the point I want to bring up for listeners is I just think sometimes, especially the last 18, the, the, you know, 2022 and 2021, the whole thought was, you know, being sold on the idea that everything was going to go to the cloud and everything belonged on one cloud. And really, it's this whole multi-cloud approach. It could be private cloud, public cloud, um, you know, and again, then then mainframes, you know, uh, right there in, in, in a building, just like they were, they've worked for 30, 40 years. So I think this whole idea of a hybrid approach is is really smart. Um, question with regards to, because this was a lot of the dream up front, and really, I don't think there was a lot of realization initially on cost optimization because of moving to the cloud. Where, what are a couple examples of where you're excited about where RBI is going to see cost cost optimization because of this move. Mm-hmm. So maybe w- what I will start first is a little bit counterintuitive, but definitely cloud transformation is not a cost cutting exercise. And I yeah. think if someone would treat it like this, will fail flat. So if you try to do your cloud to reduce the cost or in a way to reduce the cost, I think uh, this will bring you nowhere. So I think there is there are a lot of other benefits you can you can take and and cloud um i would say cost of them optimization is a very nice side effect or should be a very nice side effect but shouldn't be the kind of target or aim on uh, of its own looking from our perspective definitely moving to uh, cloud give us a lot of transparency and i think from transparency we can manage our cost and especially cost in the cloud with the much i would say more granular way and much faster and looking from this perspective, we can optimize the cost almost on a daily basis with the FinOps and with the uh, FinOps practices being spread across um, the entire group. And this, in the, in, in the end, this reduces the cost, of course, at the condition that we also take care of reducing our data center footprint. Because, of course, if you keep your both environments, you migrate to cloud, but you do not do proper planning and do execution on the cleanup of your own uh, infrastructure, then of course you have the double costing. This double bubble uh, yeah. period is uh, is growing. So from our perspective, this was bringing transparency, bringing the FinOps practice into I would say daily operation, and combining this with a clear I would say pathway in terms of uh, what activities have to be undertaken on the in local infrastructure in order to uh, reduce the cost. But I think when you put an, a, a different I would say uh, angle if you not look on the cost but increase of your efficiency then actually this is where where you get so the how you actually enable the business and how you bring the business benefits i think then when you compare then it's only apples to apples so not only look on the cost but also the benefits which are being generated with the cloud merrick this has been an incredible conversation the 30 minutes flew by i wish we had more time I want to thank you for coming on today. And definitely, I want to invite you back. So when Ola's back from vacation, if she ever comes back, um, because she's having so much fun, we should get together again and, and kind of continue this conversation. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thanks for the invitation. Thank you very much.